तुझ्या कंपनी साहित्य आहे अजूनही कळलं नाही का डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स uh it's okay i'm shooting on another day let me remind you all one more time that all these creative people are spammers that's how my account looks like also remember i never give my mobile number in any chat i neither have an advisory nor do i give any stock tips now let's start with what does the company do the company major operates in two business verticals which two number one is beauty and personal care and number two is apparel and accessories okay the moment i talk about beauty and personal care which points come up under this uh, hair care skin care body fragrances and grooming appliances personal care la 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 all these come under what beauty and personal care what comes out under fashion clothes and all that bags shoes all these come will come under apparel and accessories so base points are clear okay these two different verticals operate under a different business model how first let's understand if i'm talking about a beauty and personal care let's understand the order flow okay here we have nike here we have some x brand and here we have a customer okay now what happens let's understand under the inventory led model which happens for beauty and personal care so the customer will place an order on nike website but wait first what nike does is that nike purchases lots of products from this brand and store it in a warehouse nike first checks whether the quality of these products is good or not and then they will sell these products to the customer directly so who is supplying these products nike is supplying step number 1 they purchased from the brand step number 2 they supply to the customer simple had this been for fashion what could have happened customer places an order on the nike website now what nike does is that nike just tells the supplier order purchased i mean order placed ship it to the customer okay now what happens in fashion can i say no inventory is there on the books of nike for fashion answer is yes is there any benefit of this why is nike doing this please understand if i'm talking about fashion the fashion can change very fast and if a specific shirt if a specific category of bag or shoes goes out of fashion there are a lot of inventory can can be messed in their books it can become outdated and that can lead to losses so that is why the second one which is they are using for apparel and accessories is called as a managed marketplace kind of a business model where the brand will directly supply to the customer simple all right just one more point i want to add in the beauty and personal care is that they have many brands they own uh, various brands like nike cosmetics nike naturals and k beauty one last point on the apparel and accessories is that Uh, if i'm talking about uh, the average value of orders on nike fashion uh, mobile application and website it is among the highest leading online fashion retail platforms in india now with this understanding let's move ahead with the industry analysis so what we are going to do first we'll discuss about the retail industry analysis then we'll move on to the beauty and personal care segment and then we'll move on with the fashion segment right so first if you check out this graph you can see that the overall indian retail industry which was around 40 which was valued at around 46 trillion rupees in 2016 is expected to grow till 91 trillion rupees by 2025 now if you see carefully from 16 to 19 the cagr was around around 11% but of course during the pandemic period it dropped by 14% and it is still expected that from 2020 to 2025 it will it will continue its journey of 11% cagr now this is the overall retail that i discussed now let's move on to only beauty and personal care segment have a look at the chart it was growing at 13% cagr from 16 to 19 so a drop in 1920 same reason covid and from 2020 to 25 it's expected to grow at 12% cagr in short again a similar point that the overall indian beauty and personal care uh, 
size i can say which was 868 billion rupees in 2016 is expected to be 1981 billion rupees by 2025 uh one small point which i wanted to mention here is that the overall beauty and personal care segment is heavily unorganized so it will be interesting to watch how this sector shifts from an or- unorganized sector to an organized sector if i move on now understand i talked about beauty and uh, personal care overall now i'm talking about beauty and personal care only online okay are you understanding the shift have a look at this chart again if you see the indian online beauty and personal uh, care market segment out of the total size only 2% contributed to the online uh, space right <coughs> when in 2016 this is at already at 8% in 2020 have a look at the cagr numbers from 16 to 19 it grew at 71% cagr and even from 19 to 20 it grew at 30% cagr now you might be like 8% penetration in 2020 is it good let's compare it with the Uh, i mean let's let's have a look at the global benchmark uh, but the global benchmark data is given for 2019 so uh, i'm now going to compare the 6% which you saw in the previous graph now this 6% is what is the online beauty and personal penetration okay that is how much that is amounting to 18 us billion dollars in 2019 okay but when india was at a 6% penetration in 2019 China was at twenty five percent penetration, twenty five to thirty five percent penetration. US was at fifteen to twenty percent penetration. Are we still way lower as compared to China and US? Yes. Okay. Let's move on with the next one. India, Indian fashion market. Here you can see that from sixteen to nineteen, we grew at a twelve percent CAGR, a big sharp drop of almost thirty five percent CAGR from nineteen to twenty. And again, if I'm talking about twenty to twenty five, it's estimated to grow at eighteen percent. If you see overall, this sector is also going at a fast pace. Going ahead now with what Indian online fashion market. Now here, if you see. uh the overall cagr from 16 to 19 was how much 33% 1920 flattish almost 3% okay now again understand out of the total fashion market size in 2019 how much penetration was there in india only 8% so out of 100 only 8% was what online now if i compare our 8% with china and usa china was at what 35 to 40% us was at what 30 to 35% I hope you have understood this entire segment. Wherein first we talked about retail, then we talked about beauty personal care, then we talked about fashion, then in beauty personal care we talked about online, and in fashion also we talked about online. Now let's talk about some interesting facts about the company. The name Nike is not like called Nike, which I was a very bad joke in the beginning of the video. Ah, uh, but Nike comes from the Sanskrit word Nike, so it's like Nike Nahi. Nike who man okay uh, founded by uh, Falguni Nair uh, who was a former investment banker at Kotak Mahindra for almost 20 years and at the age of 50 she started Nike oh my god that's so inspiring isn't it uh, so Nike is what Nike is a consumer technology platform okay to be honest even i was confused that are it's a website now so why are they calling consumer technology platform basically it is a So for a simple layman uh, you can imagine it's a website but which is enabled with ai enabled with machine learning so whenever you can see many customers are coming on the website who is purchasing what what are the trends if this product is uh, you know suggested to this customer then what are the chances that this customer will buy it all this is what this is a technology platform not a plain website i hope you understood the difference between the two words uh, if i go to the next point of the company uh, I did talk about this. It is into beauty, personal care, as well as fashion. We did discuss this at length in the previous section of the video. One more point is mentioned in their RHP that is that they offer omni-channel experience to their customers through their online as well as offline channels. What do we mean by omni-presence? Okay, omni-presence means both online presence as well as offline presence. If I'm talking about online presence, they are one of the highest share of. mobile application led transactions and amongst the leading online platforms in india during financial year 21 and 5 months ended august 31st 2021 plus they also have an offline presence uh, where they have physical uh, stores kiosks in three formats one is nika lux one is nika on trends and one is nika kiosk that you can see in uh, many shopping malls right the 
smaller kiosks. Uh, they currently have 80 physical stores across 40 cities in India. So I hope the base points about the company are absolutely clear. Let's move on with some amazing, interesting key business metrics. The very first one is annual unique transacting consumers. Now, what do I mean by that? A unique a person will be treated as a unique consumer if uh, either the mobile number is different or email ID is different and such a person has placed at least one order during the last 12 months. Okay, so if I ever go on Nika website to take my beauty products, then I will definitely be a unique transacting customer for them because till date I have <coughs> not purchased anything. No need for me to tell that. Okay, but if I talk about the beauty and personal care segment, the number of consumers, unique consumers has gone up from 3.5 million to 5.6 million in 2021. If I'm talking about orders, the number of orders have also grown very nicely in beauty as well as fashion segment. The next one is average order value. Now, what is average order value? Basically, it's the total gross uh, monetary value divided by the number of orders. So if you check on an average order value uh, was is 1433, 1433 uh, in 2019 and it has gone up to 1963. Oh my God, that's that's a nice average order value. And if you check for fashion also, it has gone up from 655 to 2739. Now talking about GMV, what is GMV? Gross merchandise value. Is it similar to sales? Answer is no. Uh, uh, so how, how do I tell what is a gross merchandise value? It's nothing but a value which is grossed up with taxes which is grossed up with discounts as well. So just to give you an example, assume that the main price of the product is 100. Okay, out of that, uh, 5 rupees is GST. Okay, and assume that another 5 rupees is discount. Then ideally, sales value is 90, but GMV, because I'm going to add up, gross up, GMV will be 100. Okay, so GMV has gone up from 16,219 to, oh my God, 33,804. That's a huge number. And similarly, you can see in fashion also, it has gone up to 6,655. Fantastic. Both these segments are doing very well. Just one point I wanted to add as far as GMV is concerned. Uh, many a times we believe that uh, people in metro cities might be spending more and especially GMV number will be higher in tier one cities. Answer is absolutely no. As per that, their RHP, the GMV sales in tier 2 and tier 3 cities collectively account has, has increased from 56.9% in financial year 19 to 64% in financial year 21. So don't underestimate the power of a common man and power of tier 2 and tier 3 cities. Now let's talk about the financial analysis of this company. Interesting points again coming up. The very first one is sale of products. Remember what is sale of products? The products that they sell, which are manufactured by themselves or products which they trade in. If you remember the inventory model, wherein they were going to purchase the product from their brand, check the quality and then sell it. That is coming, un coming up under sale of products. In simple words, I can say this is like a B2C category of sale right here you can see that the revenue has moved up from 9,739 million rupees to 21,809 million rupees fantastic and even if you check a YOY for the quarter ended June you can see it's uh, an amazing jump from 2,726 million rupees to 6,916 million rupees fantastic second one is sale of services in that you can see marketing support revenue that's more like an advertising uh, just to give you a simple example, on the Nika app, if a specific advertisement is being shown up that or it comes in any specific brand comes on the top, it is like a paid promotion as well. Okay, in that case, what happens is that this advertising uh, support, which is given as a B2B category, why B2B? It will be from Nika to that brand directly. So your people like you and me are not involved. That's a revenue for the company has moved up from what to what from 1000 to 30 million to 1,950 million and on a QOQ basis, sorry, on a YOR basis also it has increased from 124 million to 840 million. I'm talking about approximate numbers, not talking about decimal points, right? Last one is income from marketplace. Here you can see, achha, uh, just to give you an example, what is income from marketplace? You remember that uh, an order is placed on the Nika portal and then Nika tells that brand directly ship to the customer. They are not going to warehouse that. In these cases, Nika doesn't 
book the revenue at a gross value they'll just book what commission income so whenever i'm talking about income from marketplace services best example of that is what commission income right so has moved up from what to what has moved up from 120 129 million to 552 million and if you check on a year on year uh, which is quarter ended one data from 31 million to 365 million that's a super jump isn't it next one is other operating uh, revenue Oh, by the way, uh, the commission income was again what? B2B category, correct? Moving on to other operating revenue, logistic services income, uh, shipping and delivery charges. So uh, many times you might have paid, uh, you want an early delivery. So you pay, uh, pay additional cost for the logistics or you don't uh, fill up the minimum cart value. You pay for the lo uh, logistics, okay? That is for early delivery or minimum cart value. That has also grown, but that's a very small number. Anyways, uh, what kind of revenue will this be? That will be again from B to C, right? One amazing point here, you can see gift card expiration. Kya baat hai? Gift card expiration is 9.47 million rupees in 31st March 2021. 31st March 2021. So that's 9 million. That's 90 lakh rupees of revenue. And what will be the card for this? Almost zero. It's a gift card. So if you ever get a gift card from Nika, please use it. Huh? Otherwise, company is going to benefit a lot, right? So I hope this point is absolutely clear. And if you check about the revenue by geography market, here you can very clearly see that revenue from India is like almost 100% of the total sale. Well, if I were to give you a quick summary of the P&L, here you can see that overall revenue has grown up at a CAGR of 148%. OMG, that's amazing. Sale of products, 150% CAGR. Sale of services, 136% CAGR. The best part I loved about this company is that it's a profitable unicorn. It's a profitable unicorn startup, I can say, which got which is getting listed. So I'm really happy about that because I believe that a startup should be profitable, right? Okay. And I'm happy that Nika is also a profitable startup. Now it's going at a very different level being listed. If you see that EBITDA margins are also very healthy and they are growing at us 261% CAGR. PAT level, their profit is uh, for the year ended 20, uh, 2021, it is 619.5 million rupees. So these are the important points about P&L. Nothing so special in the balance sheet too. Let's move on with the IPO details. Here you can see that the issue opens on 28th of October, closes on 1st of November. It's generally three days. It's three working days. That's why 1st of November. Uh, one nice point I thought is that uh, the pre-issue holding was 54.22%. Post-issue also, it is still above 50%. It's 50.56%. So, a thumbs up if the promoter holding is more than 50%, right? Going to get listed at BSC and SC both. Uh, majority is the offer for sale. Uh, a small point is, uh, a small portion is a fresh issue though, which is 630 crores. What are they going to do with the proceeds? Here you can see what are the objects of the issue. Mainly it's for setting up new retail stores. It's for new warehouses. It's for repayment or prepayment of their borrowings. It's also for uh, increasing the awareness about their brand and acquiring new customers. Uh, by the way, they do a lot of uh, promotions through influencers, not influencers like me, those who don't do makeup, uh, but through uh, a lot of you know fashion influencers, I can say. And they're also going to use it for general corporate purpose. Moving on to a very important point of valuation that is the only point which drives me crazy why have a look at this if we do a pe valuation at a lower price band the valuation is at 780 times if i'm talking about higher price band its valuation is at 809 times so it's as good as it will take me 809 years to recover my one year earning that is the interpretation of 809 is it isn't it insane it is if I'm talking about price to book value, the valuation is at 70.13x and at a higher brand, a higher band, it is 72.72x. Now, when I looked at this, I was like, this is too heavy, isn't it? But now to be honest, did you see the valuations of Zomato? Do you remember the valuations of Nazara? Yes. Weren't they very high? Absolutely yes. So I believe that all these new gen or I can say all these next gen companies don't go with the old valuation model matrix. They have their own uh, way to value their business. Plus, if I'm comparing it with Zomato or Nazara, Zomato, I don't think was in profits. This one is in profits right now. So I feel that uh, valuation for such companies is more of a story rather than numbers. 
two more points. Uh, number one is any listed peer? No. So no question of comparing it with peers. Number two point which I wanted to add up is the risk factors. Now have a look at this small chart. I hope this is visible. Uh, what is this about? It's about the GMV by their top five customer uh, top five brands on their website which one like elka cosmetics hul honada huda beauty l'oreal okay all these but if you see from 1819 to 2021 at least the total gmv is decrease in a, is in a decreasing trend so is there a risk factor that let's say just as an example honasa huda beauty they they stop selling products on nika is there going to be an impact on nika yes but at least the good point is that their dependence on few brands is slowly and steadily decreasing so i hope you have understood this small point about internal risk factors as well and then the big question will i apply for this ipo answer is yes but how many lots that i'm going to reveal on 1st of november at 11 am during my live stream so don't forget to watch this live stream let me your thoughts about this ipo in the comment section and we'll discuss all these points in the live stream till then take care Jehan and bye bye